Greetings. It's a beautiful day. I reckon it's a beautiful day to show you how to save a few bob changing UPS batteries. These are from a SmartUps VT. In fact, it's the one in my previous video I dismantled the power module on. This altogether is an SYBT4 battery pack. Uh, you'll also find it in the Symmetra PX and the Galaxy 3500 units as well. Four modules. Each module is an SYBTU1, which contains eight 7.2 amp hour batteries, rated at 12 volts apiece, so you've got a 96 volt 7.2 amp hour battery string. And the UPS uses, certainly for the UK model, it uses four in a row to provide 384 volts at 7.2 amp hours. These you'll pay upwards of 800, 900 pounds, including VAT. I mean, you know, you'll pay more than that. It depends on where you get them from. I'm going to show you how you can replace a set of four instead of paying about 800 quid. How do you fancy paying about 400 quid? Let's see how you do it. Now here's what you'll need. One Phillips screwdriver or drill, one chunky screwdriver, the sort of screwdriver you normally use for taking the lids off paint pots because it's too big to do anything else, and eight of these batteries. Now this is a CSB GP1272F2. These are the ones APC use in these battery packs. Um, you may want to try using the GPL 1272F2s instead, which are long life versions. Uh, you don't want the F1 ones, you want the F2s because the F2s have the larger terminals. You may of course decide, I'm not using CSB. I reckon the Lucky Golden Rabbit Electric Co Limited provide perfectly adequate batteries. Well, suit yourself, but you may find that they're not up to the job after all. So, you need eight of these for each of these units, so that's 32 altogether. And the price I've seen 32 on today in April 2014 is a touch under £400, including VAT, for 32 batteries. You're talking £12.49 per battery, including VAT. So, without further ado, let's see how you do it. Well, I'm not going to demonstrate with these three. I'm going to look at that one. So, don't worry about them. I need to undo eight screws. four on the side, flip it back right, and this whole top slides back and pulls out and away like so. And here you can see we have seven battery link cables. The negative wire loops through this one just to hold it up and we have the positive one over the far end as well. And this is where the big screwdriver comes into play. Now what you don't want to do is hit them there because if you hit them there you'll end up taking a chunk out of the insulation and when these are when the lid is on these even though the lid is insulated that hoop there comes into the vented section which isn't insulated and you may think well that doesn't really matter well it does matter because this is part of a string, so the way you hit through, it could be anywhere from negative, from a zero ground point right up to 384 volts relative to this metal case. You don't want to do that. The other thing you've got to be careful of is if you're not careful, you'll push these end bits out of the blade connector and you have to try and sort of shove them back in with a pair of pliers or whatever to get the connector to work properly again. And to minimize that, you put the screwdriver We'll start in the middle, as far as you can, up to the blade, like that, 
and hit it off like that. Now that has now split the string, in, in fact, so we don't know, it doesn't really matter where I work along here now because that's all disconnected. So I'll just work my way back. And of course this battery is now not connected to anything up there, so it doesn't matter if I accidentally touch the side on there. At least it doesn't on these UPS battery packs anyway. I'll show you why in a moment. And that is the whole set of batteries disconnected, ready for replacement. Now the easiest way to shift these, you can see these back ones and the front ones are quite tight. The middle ones, because the steel is a bit flexible, you can push and release the batteries and then you just slide the other ones up to the middle and release these as well. Now, if you've bought the pack empty, if you happen to have bought an empty SYBTU one, this is what you'll get. You'll have a couple of screws, obviously, seven of these connectors, and the whole metal lid. And there's, there's actually not a lot to this. You don't really need to know this be, uh, while changing the batteries, but I'll, I'll show you anyway. I'll put this to one side. As you can see, there's not a lot to it. The top lid just has this self-adhesive insulation just to protect against inadvertent jolting up against the battery terminal so you wouldn't want to drop the thing and accidentally short them out. You have an aluminium handle. The batteries sit on these plastic trays. It's just sit there, just looking for the batteries to sit on. And presumably if the batteries start venting and whatnot, it's like, you know, less likely to damage the steelwork. And at the end you have this assembly, which is a 63 amp 500 volt fuse. Remember these could be in series, so it could be breaking quite a few hundred volts, not just the single 96 volt string. The spring-loaded connector for the back, which has red connections at the top, black connections at the bottom. The fuse is actually in line with the negative connection from the batteries. The positive just goes straight out. And you have a thermistor and resistor network. Now the resistors are in parallel with each other. There are three resistor positions and in fact as you can see by the, the solder connections at the back there were three resistors but one has been snipped out. And a thermistor then which is between the blue and the brown wires here. And it either looks like this, like a little small disc capacitor, or it looks like a little diode. There's no fuse monitoring whatsoever. These connections, uh, you've got the thermistor here, you've got the fixed resistance here, so presumably these are just used as part of the, you know, as a bridge really to either as a bridge so it knows the resistance of the wires or as some sort of presence indicator so it knows there's an SYBTU one in this slot. And that's pretty much it. There's no brains to these things, there's no date counter, it's not like an inkjet cartridge, there's nothing smart about the, about the battery connections whatsoever. So, you've got your now empty tray and you've got your new batteries to go in and these go in pretty much in the in the reverse of what you did earlier on. Put them in in the middle, slide them home. So those are those connections, those that's the batteries in place. And do these terminals here and then put these connections in
Now remember what I said just now about not really mattering if these shorted. Well, as you saw by the circuit board just now, the batteries are not electrically connected in any way to the case. The case, the mounting points are there. It is completely isolated. So any one of these points does not make contact with the case. The only way the case makes connection with the UPS is by physical contact when it's in the slot, by physically sitting on a metal tray, which of course is earthed. There is no electrical connection, no bonding connection between this and anything on there. It doesn't have a contact, it just sits there on its own, completely isolated. Which means that for these batteries at least, it is perfectly safe for me to make these connections like this. But I'm still working from the outer edge towards the middle. Because then, if one did happen to have a connection to the side. It's only the last one which is going to be an issue, which is me working on here. Now, before you do this last connection, make sure absolutely you've got everything right. Remember that hooked through there as well. There's nothing daft. We've got the black on the end. We've got all these linking through all in series up to there. I haven't messed with that end at all. So this should now clip in, should clip in. There. And that battery string is electrically complete. This goes in for these hooks here. You can see there's, there's slots just on this edge, this, just on the edge, uh, the edge of this front lip here. They go in place like that. Slide to the back, it goes over and hooks into these ones on the top. Slides forward. And if it's a little bit out, don't worry because when you put the screws in, you'll bring it back. Certainly once you've done these, the back ones are pretty much already in alignment. And there you go. 100 quids worth of batteries. Instead of paying over 200 pounds for a complete unit, you've done your bit for the environment by not scrapping a whole chunk of metal and over the cost of a whole UPS, I mean, a smart VT could contain 16 of these. You've just saved 1,600 quid. Hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching.